Hi again, this is the second part of our discussion of jQuery and some, you know, basic UI, you know, usage of jQuery, okay? Um, so, so far I've got a simple example that includes one element with an ID name. I've imported the jQuery library here from the CDN, and then I wrote a short script, okay? So one of the things that you might want to do with jQuery is you might want to, um, let me actually zoom in on that a little bit, right? Um, you might want to modify the appearance of something on the screen, right? Um, and we would do that through our CSS properties, okay? jQuery provides a CSS method, <clears throat> and what this does is it allows you to set a CSS property. So you can set, um, like let's say we want to set the border, right? So the way that you use this is it takes two parameters, right? And the first parameter is the, um, the property that you want to set, and the second parameter is the value. So maybe, you know, um, if I wanted to set the border property, I could set it to one pixel, solid, um, you know, red. How about that, right? And this would be the equivalent of, you know, um, setting, you know, selector box followed by um, border colon one pixel solid, you know, red. Something like that. Okay, so here we're selecting the box with JavaScript using jQuery selector, right? And then we're setting the CSS property and we're setting the border property to this value. Okay, so let's give that a try. So I, I refresh it and there's my border. I don't know why my text is missing. Oh yeah, because I, I set the text with the, with the um, HTML property. Let me just type some text in here, right? So there we go, now we got some text. Oh, there we go, it's got the border, right? <clears throat> so anyway, so there you go, there's a simple example, right? Now, this is really not great. I mean, jQuery is, is really useful, it's really helpful if, you know, it just makes it a lot easier to get things done. This is not a good approach, though, okay, to using it. When we put CSS properties here in our JavaScript, when it comes time to making changes in our code, um, we have some of the styles in our style sheet and then some of the styles are embedded in JavaScript and they're spread all over the page. And this, like, if this was like a selection style, like when you clicked something on the page, it was supposed to show up selected, this could really easily change. Like someone might say, we don't like the color. Maybe we want to change the border. Maybe we don't want to use a border at all. We want to just set the background color. And this would be better handled if it were all in your style sheet. Okay, so this we don't want to do. I mean, you can still do this in some cases where it makes sense, but, but usually this is not what we want to do, okay? What we would prefer to do is this. Um, I'm going to go to the head of my document, and, you know, you could put this in an external style sheet also, but um, just for the, for the example here, I'm going to keep the styles all on the same page along with the JavaScript so we can just quickly look you know at each one of them but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new style here called selected or a new class name and then I'll give this the style of border um, one pixel solid um, red okay and what I'm gonna do is let me make a little bit of space there um, instead of using the CSS property, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do add class, and I want to add the selected class. So here, we're getting a lot of use out of jQuery, and this is one of the best ways to work with this. You let your JavaScript just add and remove classes, and let those classes change the state of the interface, okay, or the appearance of the interface. So we can see that this looks the same as it did before. And when I inspect it, what you'll see is that this div called box right here now has the class name selected, right? This has a couple really cool advantages for us, okay? <clears throat> First of all, it keeps the appearance of our page, you know, uh, or the code controlling the appearance where it should be in our style sheet, okay? It doesn't split the, the, the appearance code up between the style sheet and our JavaScript, okay, where in JavaScript it's kind of hard to work with, right? Um, the other thing it does that is kind of interesting is that 
it also sort of adds state to our to our HTML, um, you know, uh, code, right? And what I mean by state is that this element now has a class name that kind of marks it as, you know, in our case, selected, right? So if something's selected, like the class name here explicitly like spells that out and says this is the state that something is in, and it's it's easy for us to to test the class name and and add and remove the class name a lot easier than doing the same effect with CSS, right? So this adds other advantages by, by taking this route, okay? So anyway, so there's a simple example. Let's do another example, right? So let's imagine that um, you know here I have I have the add class right but but I don't really want to add the class what I want to do is I want to make it interactive where you click on this element and then the class is added right so jQuery provides a another method I'm gonna go back here and say box dot click right and then let's get rid of this just for the moment right okay and when you click on something, what you do is you provide a function, okay? So you the click um, method in jQuery takes a parameter that is one function, and that function is what gets executed when the click occurs. So this is a, <clears throat> a simplified way to add a click event to an element on the screen, right? Or in the, in the browser, right? And uh, so we just put a function here. So when you put the function in here, you're going to format it like this. It's going to be function, parentheses, curly breaks, braces, and then in the parentheses, you can include a variable to collect the event object. So when a, um, an event occurs in the program, and JavaScript is an event-based language, so, so really, you know, the, the program doesn't really do anything until an event occurs. In our case, we're listening for a click event, okay? This is a click is when you press the button down and release the mouse button. So the click occurs when you release the button, okay? Or release the mouse button, right? So um, so this function will occur, and the event object is a JavaScript object that contains properties that describe the, the event that just occurred. So in the case of a click event, it'll include the X and Y, where the exact location, the pixel location you clicked on the screen. And then it'll include a lot of other information too, like who was clicked, um, you know, um, it'll, it'll give you some methods like prevent the default behavior and stuff like that. And we'll talk about those later. But this event object, you know, we can only collect it if we put a variable here. So if that's empty, you, you don't have access to the event. Some people just abbreviate this as EV or E, um, I like to just spell it out. Um, but anyway, there we go. There's our there's our standard form for this. We're going to say, you know, jQuery selector dot click, and then we'll include a function here, okay? And I like to type the whole thing out like this, and we're going to put code inside the, the curly braces here. I don't like to add the code until I've got all this typed, just to make sure I don't miss any of the characters there, right? Because... The parentheses all come in pairs. The curly braces come in pairs, right? So let's make sure we don't miss any of those. Okay, so anyway, so now that we've got this, now let's try and add our um, our um, class, right? So I'm going to do add class again. Oops, I mistyped that there. And then the class we want to add is selected. Okay, now note that in CSS, the class names always begin with a dot. In the case of add class, you know, we know that we're adding a class name, so we don't have to preface this with the dot to say that it's a class name, okay? Over here, we could use any selector, like this could have been a tag name, like the P tag or, you know, the A tag, um, or it could be a class name, like something with the class selected, or it could be something like box with an ID name. So we have to preface with the type of thing it is, just like in CSS, okay? So anyway, this no dot, okay? Because we already know that it's a class. Okay, so let's give it a try. So now you're going to click on the object, and then we're going to select the object and add the class selected. So I'll refresh it here, and you can see the border's not there. And then when I click, the border shows up. So, you know, let me refresh that again and get my um, console here. And what you'll see is you'll see that this element does not have a class name. Right, so you don't see any class name there. And then when I click on it, let's move this over, right? When I click on it, 
magically the class name appears, right? Because we're adding the class. So anyway, so we've got that, right? Now, this, I didn't write this very well. We can actually write this a little better, okay? And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to change this, okay? Now, instead of saying box, I'm going to replace that with the keyword this. Now, this is a, is a variable, okay? And so we don't put it in the quotation marks, okay? If it's in the quotes, it's sort of a literal value, okay? But if it's no quotes, then it has to be an element that, G, that JavaScript recognizes. In this case, this is a special variable. This variable always represents the current object, okay? So in our case, this function is executed by the box element that we clicked on, or this, whatever this element is here, um, this function is, is executing at that element, like that's kind of the owner of the event. So this is always the object here, okay? So you'll see when I replace that and I test, everything still works just like it did before, okay? Now the reason this is so good is because if we had multiple boxes, like imagine I do this, I'm going to, I'm gonna change from ID to class name. Now remember with an ID, you can only have one for that, only one item with that name, but with a class name, we can have multiple items. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that a few times. So now I have four boxes. And what I'd like to do is I'd add, like to add a click function to each of those boxes. Okay, and so you'll see when I refresh here that I've got four boxes, and when I click on one, like let's say I click on the third one, you'll see that the third one gets the border. And the reason why is when I've created the selector, jQuery saw that we used a class name, and it found all the elements with that class name and gave them all a click. So they each have a click function. Now, when we click on one of these, this becomes the current object. That's the, the object that you clicked on. In our case, we clicked on this box right here. Okay, that's the one that got the border, right? So when we click on, on one of the boxes, this is that one box that you clicked on. Because when we click here, we've got four click actions, but you can only click on one of them at a time, right? So when we click on this one, this is, you know, box number three. And then we add the class to box number three. And you can see in the inspector here that, you know, box number three got the class name. And, you know, we changed this to a class, but that's okay. You know, any element can have multiple class names. Okay, so we can add another class. You could add three or four or five classes, right? So anyway, I hope that's useful there. And we're going to move on with this and do a little bit more. But this whole idea of adding classes and removing classes is super useful. There's so much you can do with that. So I'm going to do a few more examples with this, right? And I hope you um, enjoyed watching that. Okay, thanks.